Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today's a, a nice day because I get to work on a family treasure heirloom that was uh, belonged to a fellow's uh, father, and uh, they asked me if I couldn't see if I can get this thing working again. It's uh, it's dusty. It's got a little bit of a skip to it, and uh, the it I'm referring to is a Martin. It's the Martin Wheel Company. So since 1884, a lot of us are familiar with the uh, the Martin. Um, Spin fish, uh, fly fishing reels, but not necessarily the spin fishing reel. And quite honestly, this is the first time I'm working on one. This is the model 3930, which means it's a 30 size reel, and uh, it's appropriate for lake fishing, river fishing, and uh, inshore ocean fishing. So just a couple of basic tests. I did this, and the bail doesn't seem to be returning or wanting the, wanting the trip. And uh, I think I've done this one before. We're going to try just freeing that up. This has been sitting for an awful long time. You can see the dust in that. And a lot of times grease just dries in those bail arms there. And I think uh, we're just going to flood this with some penetrating oil. See if we can trip it manually to make sure that the springs work. And uh, now we'll give it a try, see if it, uh, if it doesn't trip that way. So I'm not sure that was completely loaded there. There we go. Let's take a look at this reel. Let's service it and, uh, and we'll come back to that bail at the end of the deal. So I like to start by taking off the exterior pieces. In this case, I'm going to take off the, the spool. I'm going to do some cleaning on that spool. This one was made in Japan, so this one would be interesting to see if uh, uh, it follows the styles of some of the other Japanese reels that we've been doing lately. I have one here that's just kind of pressed concrete. You can see it's all bent out of shape. Uh, that's a function, and I've talked about this from time to time. If you're not fishing the reel, please disengage the the drag by, by backpedaling this. Back it off. That way it doesn't compress the drags like it's done here, and then they dry out if they're stored for any period of time. So do that, and that'll save the life on those drags. We'll go into the other drags later, see what's going on there. An awful lot of dirt. You can see that it's just... Uh, been some time since anything has been done with this reel. So before uh, going crazy, I'm just going to see if we can get some of that off now that the spool is off. I'm going to use a pen rod and reel cleaner. It's a good product that I've kind of used on a lot of a lot of different reels. And it does a good thing of getting basic film and, and grease and junk off of reels, fish scales, things like that. And if you're going to service a reel, you might as well take an extra minute or two to, to clean the reel up while you're at it. So we'll go about that far. That's all we need to do. Let's go underneath then. We're going to remove the handle. And I guess this is a good time to suggest that if you like these kinds of fish, fishing reel uh, videos, if you're uh, into the art of reel repair, if you just want to see how reels get fixed and uh, serviced, or if you're just interested in the mechanics of it, then please subscribe to my channel. And if you do, hit that notification button. That way you'll see all of the um, reels that I'm working on. I work on all kinds of reels. This one just being a classic, but uh, certainly work on others as well. And uh, ocean, spinning, bait casting, you name it, kind of work on that. So I've just uh, used the penetrating oil as a cleaner and as a light lubricant uh, to make sure that the folding handle folds. Now we can get over to the business side of this reel. And we'll just uh, work these case screws out here and we'll all uh, get an idea of what it is that, uh, how it is that this Martin reel is made. So Martin, we're familiar with the, uh, the fly reels for sure, uh, but I haven't seen the spinning reel. And I'm pretty sure this one wasn't made at their plant, that this one was a contract reel made in, uh, in Japan. And the Japanese reels that you see like this under other trade uh, names, generally speaking, those reels were made in the 1970s. So uh, Penn, and out, uh, Penn certainly did that, Shakespeare, Ryobi, there's all kinds of folks that uh, were made. Well, this is a very simple reel inside. You can see we have a main gear. We have a crosswind block that pushes the um, axle shaft up and down. The stud on the main gear is what rides inside the axle shaft to push that up and down like that. And um, I'll tell you what, from a service standpoint, this one might win an award as a simple reel. I'm going to check. So 
I always like to check a couple of things before I remove the main gear. One of them is, can we take that anti-reverse dog and get it out of the way, this way? Because when you go to remove that main gear like this, if you don't have that out of the way, there's a chance that that may spring on you. As a general service, I do not remove the, the anti-reverse dog, but I do pay attention to it. Here is a, an E-clip that's holding that dog on. And if you look at how that spring is set for that anti-reverse, there's a long tag arm here, wraps around the, the post, and it comes up on this side with a little hook arrangement on the um, that flips over the dog here. That's what's going to push that in and out, the tension on that. I mention that because if you get stuck, if for some reason that uh, clip isn't there or that dog gets pulled away, well, now you have a reference point of how that's done. This is a uh, reel that doesn't have uh, bushings there. It has a uh, washer and underneath that the case is actually the bushing here. So again, a relatively uncomplicated reel. If you look at the back side of this, we want to make sure that that's clean. In order to clean that, I'm going to take steel wool. And I'm just going to get the dried grease off of that because we know dried grease is in this reel. We can see it in the front. So I'm going to use the blade of a screwdriver here just to kind of gather that old grease. It's not as bad as I thought it was. So we'll just continue the cleaning with a cotton swab. Once you get the majority of that out of the way, go to a hard brush. Now, I get these kind of at Home Depot or dollar stores or the like. They're not very expensive, but if, uh, if you don't have one of these and you have an old toothbrush, go ahead and use the toothbrush to clear the channels. Then inspect the teeth. Make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not chipped or cracked in any regard. Clean up the last bit of residue with that paper towel. And this one's kind of ready to reinstall. To reinstall, I'm going to use a fishing reel grease. I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. And I've said many times on my channel, I don't care what grease you use, but make sure that it's designed for fishing reels. The manufacturer to me is in material. And uh, I, I don't really care too much whether it's one manufacturer's brand on a different reel. I mean, obviously, if you're using a Martin reel here, you're going to be hard pressed to find Martin grease these days. But uh, as long as it's designed for fishing reels, uh, they, they work well cross-brand. All right, we've put some grease onto the shaft. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the main gear in there now. Just lay that off to the side. And when I put things off to the side, generally it's, well, it's in a parts tray. And my parts tray is nothing more than the bottom, in this case, of a fast, fast food container. That helps me to keep track of where the parts are. And when I go to reinstall, it's a central place to go grab them. I'm going to clean up the desk for a moment here. I'll just remove the axle shaft. There's a screw holding the, the axle shaft and the, and the crosswind block in. So I'm going to remove that. It's a Phillips head screw. And one of the things that's kind of beautiful about these older style vintage reels is the simplicity. They don't get very complicated. So there's less things to break. And in the interim, they're very reliable and dependable reels. All right, you wanted to pay attention when you were doing that to note that the screw hole is on the downside of this block. Very easy on reinstall to, to flip that around the wrong way, and then you'll have a performance problem because it'll bump into the top. So please take pictures along the way. Use your cell phone, use a video camera. Oh, geez, just use anything that can take a picture. Um, Use a digital camera. I guess you could take it on film too if you wanted to. Just uh, takes a while to get the film back from being processed if anybody still does much of that these days. But at any rate, take that picture. It'll give you the reference points that you can go back to if you're, uh, if you're wondering what happened to it. All right, we have a, um, have a rotor tie down nut here. Let's assume it's a 12 millimeter. It's not, it's less than that. So sometimes you can reach these with an offset wrench like this. Sometimes you're going to need a deep socket. In this case, I'm able to get that. And this reel has a standard counterclockwise rotation to remove the, the rotor. 
Now the reason I thought that maybe it wasn't going to be that way is you have a tie down clip here that's going to hold the rotor in place. So just again make sure that you pay attention to this as you go to work on it. Alright we're going to remove this then. Walk that up. It looks like we have a burring in here. So I'm going to take that rotor off for a moment. There's two clips or two uh, screws here. We're going to remove that. And again, pay attention. It's probably just as easy to flip this around the backside. This is your trip mechanism and it lines up with the arm of the uh, reel. So just go ahead and make sure that you, uh, you set that the right way. I'll take those little screws and put those into my parts tray so that I don't lose those. And then we'll be able to clean the body. We'll be able to lube, I believe. We'll see if it's a burring or a bushing up here. We'll be able to do the lubrication on that. And I am certain when we go to put this one back together again, it's just going to work very nicely. We should be able to pull this out now. And we have a burring in there. So let's just go ahead and uh, remove that burring. There's some junk on the outside of it, so let's clean that off. I guess junk is a technical term, huh? But I didn't notice anything catching in the burring. So I'm going to say that the burring is in pretty good condition. does not need to be replaced. So if you did need to replace this burring, the way to do that is to order a replacement. And you're going to give them three measures. You're going to give them the inside diameter of the hole. So in this case, that's probably about a 10 or an 11 millimeter. It's in millimeters. You're going to give them the outside diameter. That's probably more like 16 or 17. And you're going to give them the height of that, probably three, maybe four millimeter. And uh, you can do that with a digital caliper. That's the easy way to do it. If you don't have the digital caliper, well, go ahead and grab one of, uh, easy said, grab one of these, which will actually show you that. And again, just find the center point for these then. In this case, that uh, measures about, uh, well, it was, wasn't bad, what a guess, about 17 for the outside. Looks like about about nine on the inside, and a height of about uh, four. So you can use a, a straight edge if you don't have the digital caliper. Don't run out and get one, uh, but uh, if you have one, it's certainly going to be convenient. All right, I'm doing the same thing here on the pinion gear that I did on the other. Checking the teeth to make sure that it's all in good stead. We'll make sure that it gets a nice coating of grease since this one hasn't had one in a long time. I'm also going to put a little bit of grease onto the shaft where that bearing is going to ride so that that rides nice and smooth. I'm going to use fishing reel oil. I'm going to use Lucas's oil here. I'm going to just soak this. It's a, um, a shielded bearing. It's not sealed. So the oil will seep down through the shield. We'll re reset that. I come across and place that back in the container. And as I was just doing that, just a reminder, I uh, have taken to the practice of putting a light greasing on the outside of that bearing so that the next person who services this will have the opportunity to, uh, to pull that out easily like I did. And funny, just like that, I've kind of poked this up here. There you go. Let's do that again. I guess lesson learned there. You want to hold the bottom. There was a collar that went on, so let's put that collar back on. Should have done that before I installed. There we go. Now I'll, st I'll stop and hold everything from jumping around too much. Remember what we said? This goes to the face side here. That little disc is clean. It's just got some rust on it. I'm assuming it wasn't a stainless part. Okay. Have the holes lined up. Now I can go to the parts tray and get those screws out. And we'll move on to just reassembling the reel. We'll take a look at the uh, take a look at the drags up top. But for the most part, the reel is uh, come apart the way it should. And now it's just a matter of making sure everything's appropriately lubricated. And ready to go back into uh, fishing mode for Scott. So 
So if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave it in the comments section, I do try to uh, answer those questions uh, as best I can. And the uh, comment section is the best way to do it. There is a, a phone number that does appear on the back end when I show my business card, but that's a hard way to reach me because if I'm in the shop, chances are I'm working on a reel or doing a video. And as I'm doing that, well, I can't answer the phone. So uh, the best way to get an answer is to leave me a question. Uh, Leave me a question in the comments section, and I do try to kind of respond to them before I start my day. Uh, generally, I'll grab a cup of coffee and try and answer the questions that came in the night before. So that's the best way for those of you that need to reach me or have any questions that I might be able to answer. Okay, we're just going to tighten this down now. Again, that came in a, uh, a clockwise manner, so tighten it, tighten it up that way. Give it a spin. Spins beautifully, spins easily. So next thing up then, we're going to just clean off the shaft on that uh, uh, axle shaft. I'm going to grab our cross wind block. I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication onto the axle shaft. Don't flood this one, because when you put it through the pinion gear, it'll all just scrape off. It won't do any good for anybody. Bring that down. Remember what we said about the cross wind block? The mounting hole is on the bottom side. And there's two little rod, uh, shoulders here that that's going to ride on. So let's, let's put a little bit of grease onto each one of those before we load. Let's go ahead and grab that now. Bring that down and align the hole in the axle shaft. You'll see it here. Align that hole with the hole in the cross wind block. And then make sure that your axle shaft goes down into the carrier on the bottom of this reel. So I don't have any indication. If anybody knows what manufacturer in Japan made this one, I have no indication. It's just uh, some of the uh, ones that I've seen don't match up with this. I do know it's a trade reel. But other than that, if you, uh, if you know any more about who might have made this, well, I know I've constantly learned that Folks that watch my channel know a whole lot more about some of these things than I do. I'm sure somebody has an answer out there somewhere. All right, you need to line the stud up with that hole, just like that. But I just noticed as I turned this over, we might as well just kind of do the scrubbing up here. I'm using a kitchen scrubby, and again, this has the, um, the pen rod and wheel cleaner on it already. It, uh, a little bit goes a long way with that, so we're going to do the same thing here. We'll just make sure that case is nice and, and clean. Now we'll go back and do that. So I'm looking here to make sure that the stud gets into that uh, groove first. And now if, before you do anything about putting screws in, give it a spin and make sure that the main is turning and the main is turning here. And then make sure your axle shaft is going up and down, which it is, which means that you have it set properly. All right, we'll just go ahead now and take the screw and get that one in there. I am noticing that they, they use steel screws, which is sub, which are subject to rust. So if you have a real needs to be serviced like Scott and you don't want to do it yourself even though this channel is designed to show you how to do it yourself. The uh, I do repair reels by mail like I'm doing here for Scott and if you uh, contact me on the business card or by way of the business card the email on it that follows uh, then I'll be happy to provide you with real repair information. And again I work on everything from modern reels to classics to everything in between spinning, ocean reels, freshwater ultralights, doesn't matter. So if you have one that needs a tune-up, and I recommend tune-ups on an annual basis, or one that's broken and maybe sitting on your shelf for a while because, well, you haven't been able to get it repaired, uh, any and all of those are things that I work on, and I'd be happy to provide you with information about the, uh, the real repair aspect of this. All right, we're just going to tighten these down then. Take a look at the spool. We already know it's going to run nice and easy. But 
the handle back on. Let me get it started. Now I used the, um, the penetrating oil that to kind of loosen this up. Before I fully crank it down, I am going to put a little bit of oil, regular oil. It's a little bit thicker on the seams of the handle and the, the joint of the reel. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's just go over quickly to the, the drag stack then. We're going to insert a pick into that little opening there to remove this flat uh, clamp. That's a retention clamp. I'm going to pick these up and see what we have. So we have a bottom, we have a little metal spring washer, the first one that came out. Go ahead and put that back. So this is kind of a one drag system. It's got a very thick rubber washer. You don't need to do anything with that. It feels like it's rubber anyway. You want to make sure that the metal washer is, is Clean. You don't want that to drag any. And the shiny side goes up on this. So we're going to put that spring washer in. We're going to put the eared washer in next. We're going to put the drag washer in. We're going to put the top coat washer in. Now notice that it has a little stud kind of. It's not a complete circle. That's going to ride in a in a groove in that uh, axle shaft. Is that groove right here? So when you go to mount it, it'll be in that groove there. And then just go ahead and put that clip back in and hold it when you do because it will spring on you. I'm just going to seat one side of it. I'm going to use a screwdriver for some increased leverage. And you need to work this around. There's a, it will sit relatively easily. And that's installed just as it is there. Okay, when you go to put this back on, look for that groove. Here it is. Line the slot up here with that groove. Just like that. And then uh, one more thing, I guess we get some dirt on the spool that I wasn't paying attention to. Go ahead and get that done. Bring up the top, throw that button on, make sure that the drag holds. And we'll, uh, we're going to call this one done. We're going to play around with that bell a little bit. Yep, the drag is holding. That's the important thing there. You want to make sure that the drag holds. And uh, there you go. Wow. Look at that, Scott. That's a beauty, huh? Just a lot of grease is out. Now this one we noticed that when we did it we kind of had a little bit of a harder time it, and it looks like just the, the penetrating oil all by itself has, oh, that's the high spot right there, the penetrating oil all by itself has just kind of made that work. So there you go. Sometimes just uh, leaving something alone will fix that for you. That's it. All right so that's the Martin 3930 made in Japan circa 1970s a nice little reel that's going to have a second chance. So again, uh, to all that are first responders, uniform personnel, all of our essential um, workers, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing for us during the pandemic. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everybody, please, stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.